So we're actually going to interrupt the back and forth because we've got a question from the mayor's office. So. <laughs> okay, and I'm, I'm going to ask it. Uh, so um, mayor's communication staff have asked, do you think it's appropriate to comment when the city is so much different than when you were mayor? Oh. Well, look, uh, I have some experience, I think, to offer. I, I, I think there are a lot of things that are different. There are a lot of things that are the same. But let me say something that I think is particularly important. I care about this city. I feel passionate about this city, and I know you do too. I want it to succeed. I want it to be the best possible city that it can be. And so, so I speak in that regard. I'm speaking as a citizen uh, of this city. All right, who's next? All right, do we have a next, another question lined up? We have Craig. All right. Hello. Uh, first, thank you very much for coming out and sharing your wisdom with us. Um, I'm sure that Mayor Ford will agree that you do have a lot of experience and we're very happy to hear it and have it shared here today. Uh, following in the lines of some of the questions that have come previously, you talked about the federal circle. The world's becoming more partisan. What's the cause of that? How do you address it? Samir Institute did a number of exit interviews with MPs. One of the things that came up was there's no real training for politicians. Uh, when you go into Parliament Hill, or I'm assuming in the city as well, you know the partisan stuff, but you don't get a lot of background of what it means to be a politician, what the rules are, how to work. Do you think that having a proper uh, education strategy or mentorship strategy to help new politicians learn the ropes, perhaps from seasoned people like yourself, might help reduce the, uh, the partisan rhetoric and increase the capacity to work together? Well, I'd like to think so, but I think uh, a key part of the problem is there has become too much of a centralization within the Prime Minister's office. Now, uh, perhaps some of it started in, in our time. I don't want to be partisan about this, if I can, although I can be too. But I, uh, uh, I, I, I think it, uh, you know, it has occurred, I think, it's, it's evolved or deteriorated over uh, quite a number of years. But I don't think it's been nearly as bad as it is uh, right now. There seems to be a very central control. Uh, the MP doesn't, doesn't seem to matter that much anymore. Uh, the, the MP doesn't have the kind of influence. At one time, uh, the, they called the Prime Minister the first amongst equals in terms of the cabinet, and they they said that, uh, you know, you had to work with your MPs uh, to keep them on side. Well, now they're just sort of ordered to stay on side. Uh, the institution of Parliament, I think, is, is hobbling at the moment. And I think we need some further attention to that. We need reforms. We've got to get back to making Parliament work as it should, making parliamentarians more important in all the process than they are at the moment. Our uh, next question up. All right. Nope. Nope. Over here. Thank you. Um, I have to identify myself as a former city planner, and I had the privilege of working with Senator Eggleton when he was the mayor, and uh, very different times. And um, but we had housing problems in, and then those were the issues that I was working on. Um, and I guess I want to give you the platform because today, you know, so many years later, bigger problems, no solutions not anywhere closer to any of the solutions. And this morning I was at the Affordable Housing uh, Committee uh, uh, meeting in which the report that you mentioned before about uh, you know, private sector and, and partnerships and initiatives and great ideas. Um, but I want to give you a chance to, so I guess, express some of your views because looking at federal and particularly provincial budgets in the next six to ten years, a very dismal picture. And so that, that you know, the funding is not going to come from that direction. And can we be successful with private partnerships and local initiatives? Again, more pressure on the city. Well, we need a partnership of all levels of government: uh, the private sector, uh, the non-for-profit sector, the co-op sector. Everybody needs to be. But we need a national housing strategy. I know, it's been a long haul and we don't have one. We're, I think, the only OECD country that doesn't have a national housing strategy. Uh, 
You know, we got four million people in this country can't find decent, affordable housing. They're paying, in many cases, 50%, 40, 50% of their income on housing. That's a disgrace in a country like this. This is a, this is a rich country. We can't have that circumstance continue like that. We need to have everybody pulling and being uh, a, a part of this. I think we need to get political will. And I think people have got to get that message across to the federal government uh, initially because it's pulling back uh, from housing and I think that's a big mistake. Uh, because we need all levels of government involved. They've, they've got a fair bit of money and that money is needed. We've still got a, homelessness is still a scar in our, our cities uh, as well. And you know, when it comes to a plain economics, a business case, uh, it's cheaper to put, take somebody off the street and put them into housing with support services than it is to leave them on the street. There's been studies that have done, one for example, says that it costs $100,000, this came out of Alberta by the way, $100,000 to leave a person on the street because they're in and out of emergencies and hospitals, they're in and out of shelters, they're in and out of jail, uh, they need all sorts of different kinds of help uh, by clinics, etc. And this adds up quite a lot of cost, 100000 it was estimated. But if you give that person housing with support services, it's about 35000 Well, there's a business case. Why wouldn't you do that? So I, I think we need more engagement uh, uh, of all levels of government in that area as well. One of the issues that is currently before the city, and I'll finish with this because I could go on about housing for an awful long time. Uh, it's, a, it's a subject that's uh, very special to me. But in, in my time, and David Crombie and John Sewell before me, um, we developed a lot of mixed housing because we said, we don't want the old style segregated public housing projects where you keep the poor all there and keep other people over here. We want to try to mix as much as you can. Well, you're not going to have uh, the poor living in maybe Rosedale or Forest Hill, but you'd, you'd still have some mixes, uh, lower middle income, etc., and lower income, uh, more mixes. And the city seems to have gotten away from that. And I think that's a shame. Now, there is an issue right now before the city. The, the mayor proposed that, the, well, not just the mayor, the mayor and the Toronto Housing Corporation proposed that they sell some 700 individual houses of the 850 houses that they have. And uh, the three of us, uh, Sewell, Crombie, and myself, all sent a letter of objection to that because we said, look it, uh, don't, don't, uh, what you want to do is get rid of the housing that is mixed and puts people into different neighborhoods and mixes the men uh, with other people of different income brackets. You want to get rid of that and you want to just uh, strengthen the uh, accommodation in the areas that are more segregated. So we said, no, that, that's not the way we see things. And so that that's an issue that's currently before the city. But I, I better cut it off there. I could go on for some time. But thank you for what you're doing and continue to do in housing. All right. <laughs> Hi, Judy Prabolden, and thanks very much for taking this question. Um, to me, the next issue that will face Toronto that is most like the transit issue that prompted your letter earlier uh, this year is the casino issue. Mm -hmm. And I'm not so much asking what you think it should, the answer should be, but how you think we should get to the answer. Because um, it seems there are lots of ramifications, implications on... Uh, employment, retail, traffic, um, and how should that unfold? Uh, the transit issue was finally resolved by a group of experts who provided their opinion to City Council and a decision was formed. Um, it, will we listen to the evidence this time? What do you think we should do? Well, I'll give you both my personal opinion as well as what I think uh, the way forward is. Uh, I think it's a bad idea. I don't, I don't think we should have a casino in Toronto. We've got enough gambling. Uh, you know, and gambling preys on the poor and the, the people that have addictions, gambling addictions. Um, there's all sorts of opportunities for them to gamble now if they want to. You know what I find particularly disgusting? is the provincial government is promoting this as a way of balancing their budget. That's terrible. 
And you know, the uh, I hear about the uh, big development, uh, entertainment development people that want to come in and say, well, we'll put all this entertainment in, we'll put all these shopping areas in and all that sort of stuff. Well, yeah, but they, it's the casino. That's just the, the enticements uh, to, to get you on side for the thing. Well, I just don't think we need it. Uh, if, if somebody else wants it, uh, they want it in Mississauga, they want it, another one in Niagara Falls, fine, go ahead. I hope we don't get it here. Now, having said that, uh, I'm mindful of the fact that there was a referendum here on that issue uh, quite a number of years ago, plus a referendum. There was a, uh, a vote taken by citizens and they said no, they didn't want it, which I think was, again, the right decision. But if that's going to now change, then I think it, they got to go back and have another vote. Uh, you know, I may not be, uh, I've given you my opinion, my opinion may not be the majority opinion. And I'm not one that says everything should go to a vote uh, by the citizens, but in this particular case, it, had a his, it has a history. They already had a vote, so I think if you're now going to change what was voted on previously, you've got to go back and get another vote.